What are the rare bones having some having some characteristic peculiar features? What are those? Clavicle is the only long bone. It's a long bone, first of all. It is a shaft and it has two ends. So it's the only long bone which lies horizontally. Most of the long bones that we talk about are basically the bones of the upper and lower limbs. They are lying vertically. Take for example, humerus, radius, ulna, femur, tibia, fibula. If a person stands in an anatomical position, these bones are lying vertically. But the clavicle is the only long bone which lies horizontally. Second thing, it is subcutaneous throughout. It is subcutaneous throughout. Third thing, it mainly ossifies in membrane. It mainly ossifies in membrane, except from the medial end, the sternal end, where we have some cartilaginous growth. Apart from that, the entire clavicle is ossifying in membrane. And that ossification will have two primary centers. They have two primary centers of ossification. It is one of the first bones to ossify. It is one of the first bones to ossify. Right? So it is a long bone lying horizontally, it is subcutaneous, so that is a good part, we can feel it. It has a sinus curve. It is not a straight bone, it is a sinus curve like this. You will see how the curve lies. Then what is the use of this bone? There are few uses. Before going to the uses, a couple of more important points about it. That as the bone lies subcutaneous, or you can see, it said the you can actually feel the entire bone. Obviously, there are few nerves which roll against it. What will be these nerves? As the bone is lying subcutaneous, the nerves will be superficial nerves or subcutaneous nerves. And those nerves over here are basically supraclavicular nerves. Supraclavicular nerves. These are the sensory nerves around the shoulder area. There are three over here. We have the lateral, we have the intermediate, we have the medial. Lateral, intermediate and the medial supraclavicular nerves. In them, this intermediate one or the middle one, it might, it doesn't always, but it might, pierce the clavicle. So, as the nerves are very close to clavicle, remember when there is a clavicle fracture, which is also one of the most common fractures for the palin, and when that fracture heals, it might trap some of the nerves, leading to a later onset of pain, because the nerves, these are sensory nerves, and if you irritate them, the pain will arise. So, post healing of the clavicular fracture might lead to pain, might lead to pain, right? So, remember that part. So, ossifies in membrane. Two prime centers of ossification, lying subcutaneous, lying horizontally, might be pierced by the supraclavicular nerves. These nerves are actually coming from the cervical plexus, so you might be wondering from where are they coming. We have the spinal cord, spinal nerves. We have eight pairs of spinal nerves, and the upper few of the pair of spinal nerves they form a plexus, known as the cervical plexus of nerves. So supraclavicular nerves are coming from the cervical plexus of nerves. Okay. Now, as we said that this bone. What's the use of what is what's the function of this bone? Use or function of this bone. That's very important to know. Other bones we can imagine the humerus, the radius, and they are from the arm forearm. Well, what is the clavicle doing? It's just lying over here. It's also known as a beauty bone, the collar bone. The clavicle is also known as a collar bone or the beauty bone. There are some benchmarks made by human beings, for example. If you see a female having a collarbone, which is which actually can be seen, it denotes a certain, you can say, a certain uh, amount of beauty. It adds to the beauty of the female. It's said to be a beauty bone, just word over here. But remember, it's a collarbone because the collar of your whatever you are uh, wearing is near this clavicle. Now, coming to the uses of functions, this is not a function. The beauty bone, that's not the function. Just a way to call it as the use or function of this bone is very important. It transmits the weight of the pelum. So, pelum, you can see, it's hanging away from the body, and every mass has a weight. Obviously, this bone, this part of the body has a weight. But where is the weight going? Is it going downwards? But downwards is not supported. Downwards, we have free edge. When the person stands and walks, where is the weight of the pelum going? 
is going medially into the axillary skeleton via clavicle. So, clavicle helps in transmission of weight. Clavicle helps in very important transmission of the weight of upper limb. We will see how the weight is transmitted. But therefore, understand that as it is given a responsibility, very high responsibility of transmission of weight. So, if the person falls to the ground with an outstretched hand, person falls on the ground, the weight is the whole weight, the entire weight of the whole upper limb is being transmitted through the clavicle. So, therefore, clavicle is one of the most common bones to fracture. That is one thing we need to understand. That as it is transmitting the weight, fractures are common. High responsibility, high chance of damage. Second thing about after transmission of weight from the clavicle is that it uh, acts as the area for attachment of muscles. There are various muscles, as we will see forward, which are attached over here, attachment of muscles. Third thing is, apart from transmission of weight, what it does it is, is that it takes the whole upper limb slightly away from the center of the body, so that the upper limb can be acted freely, more efficiently. If the upper limb, imagine the shoulder joint was close to the midline, the activity of the upper limb would be very, very, very limited. It acts as a strut for movement, for upper limb movement. You can see, you can imagine that it is taking the whole upper limb away from the center of the body. So, it can work efficiently slightly away from the center. And there are few congenital diseases in which the clavicle is absent, known as cleidocranial dysostosis. Cledo is another word for clavicle, C-L-E-I-D-O, cledo. So, in cleidocranial dysostosis, the clavicle is absent and the upper limb are more close to the midline and the activity is very, very much reduced of the whole function of the upper limb. Now, let us look at the clavicle over here. So, this is the right clavicle, the features given over here and as I told you, this is a sinus curve. This is the right clavicle and here we are seeing two surfaces, a superior surface and an inferior surface. Viewing it superiorly, viewing it inferiorly. So, as the clavicle is a long one, it has a shaft and two ends. So, in the middle, it has a shaft. This is the shaft part of the clavicle. It has two ends. This is the medial end, known as the sternal end, and that is rounded. It is a lateral end, known as the acromial end, and that is flattened. Understand? You are looking at a right clavicle from the superior surface. As it is, as it is written that there is an anterior part over here, and that is a posterior part over here. Anterior posterior view. Posterior over here, right? Anterior posterior view. So now we can imagine about the clavicle that that is the medial part of the clavicle, that's a little part of clavicle. So middle part of clavicle, if you see, it is convex anteriorly. And the little part of the clavicle, it is concave anteriorly, anteriorly over here, anteriorly over here. Now, if now as a bone is subcutaneous, you can feel it. So if you start feeling the bone on the medial aspect, you can easily feel it because it is more, more projected anterior, it is convex anterior medially. On the middle aspect, it is more prominent or projected anteriorly. So you can feel it very easily over here. But as you move your fingers laterally, you will see the clavicle is going behind, going a bit posteriorly, right? Because it is laterally it is concave anteriorly. And vice versa. Vice versa meaning by that we'll say that laterally it is convex posteriorly and medially it is concave posteriorly. Remember, it's a sinus curve, the sinus curve, right? Clavicle. Now, various muscles are attached over here. I'll just name a few muscles over here. What are those? Few muscles over here is that at this point on the medial side anteriorly, you have the main muscle over here that is the pectoralis major. Pectoralis major. Here, the main muscles will be lying as a deltoid. Behind deltoid, we have a trapezius over here. Over here, we also have the attachment to the sternocleidomastoid. Clidomastoid. Clido is another name of clavicle. Other muscles also we have, but, but more importantly are these. Spectralis major, deltoid, trapezius, and sternocleidomastoid. Now look at the inferior surface. The inferior surface has a middle groove over here, which is attachment for the subclavius muscle. This goes from here into the first rib, because first rib lies just below the clavicle. And then you also have attachment of ligaments. So see what actually happens is, let me show you over here. If you look over here like this, I'm zooming it more. Look at the clavicle. Focus on the clavicle. 
And what do you see is the first rib over here. This is the first rib over here. It is just below the medial end of clavicle. So from the first rib below, you have some ligaments which are attaching the first rib to the clavicle. As you go later, you will see this coracoid process. Look at the coracoid process over here. It also lies below the lateral end of clavicle or below the lateral one third of clavicle. And therefore, there will be ligaments attached from the coracoid process to the clavicle. What are the names given to these ligaments? Understand, names given to these ligaments are as the name goes. Here, the ligament is not what you deal with the word ligaments in the abdomen. In the abdomen, in the abdomen when we say ligaments, it is the double layered fuller peritoneum, like the gastrospinal ligament, the linorenal ligament, and so on. But in case of the bones, osteology, when you say ligaments, it's a structure, a very hard structure that is connected to two bones. Okay, so that is known as ligaments. Now, the name of the ligaments are very straightforward. If it is going from coracoid process to the clavicle, that is known as coracoclavicular ligament. Its attachment will be on the inferior surface of the clavicle. Same over here, this is known as a costoclavicular ligament. Its attachment will be on the inferior surface of the clavicle, more medial. So, you can see the first rib are below the clavicle. The coracoid process below the clavicle. Now, look at the ends as well. This medial end over here is attaching to the sternum. It forms a sternoclavicular joint. This joint? This is a sternoclavicular joint. The lateral end of the clavicle forms a joint with the acromion. So, that is known as acromioclavicular joint, AC joint. What is acromion? Acromion is a part of the scapula. Sternum is a part of the axial bone, the sternum, again a subcutaneous bone on the anterior chest wall, medial, single. So, if these two joints and these two ligaments, this is how the weight is being transmitted, understand that too, how the weight is being transmitted. Okay, we will come to the weight transmission, but first let us deal with that clavicle, right, okay. So, if you are looking at the inferior surface, what we just saw over here, that on the medial side, we have this costoclavicular ligament attachment because middle side with the first rib. On the lateral side, we have this conoid tubercle and the trapezoid line. These conoid and trapezoid, they are the parts of coracoclavicular ligament. Coracoclavicular ligament. 